having said that i think i'll go over to the to my talk uh, i will be speaking on uh, diabetes and the eye uh, ophthalmology perspective uh, and then i think we'll have the uh, diabetologist perspective after that so uh, why am i showing you this picture uh, this very scary picture of the retina is because this is what we are seeing now and most of the pictures that we are seeing are of very young patients and also covid has made things even more worse because people have not been able to keep their sugars under control they have not been able to come for a regular check up and more and more we are seeing patients with this sort of a picture in our opd for those of you all who are not uh, retina specialists or not even ophthalmologists this is a patient with a proliferative diabetic retinopathy one of the most advanced uh, complications of uh, diabetes itself so this is how a normal eye would look to give you a perspective uh, now that was proliferative stage uh, going on to the other condition uh, which can cause uh, vision uh, abnormalities is something called as uh, diabetic macular edema and uh, this is what uh, it looks like you can see all the exudates there right in the center of the eye on the area called as a macula which gives us the most sensitive vision that we have this is the neovascularization that occurs at the optic nerve again a very severe uh, indication uh, of the disease so let's talk about diabetes in the eye i will predominantly be talking about diabetic retinopathy being a retina surgeon but there are other conditions that can affect uh, the eye uh, due to diabetes uh, cataract like dr praveen mentioned you can also have glaucoma and uh, all the other comorbidities that exist can itself worsen diabetes and its complications in the eye i have no financial disclosure so i would be covering the talk in uh, some sections wherein we talk about the burden the risk factor the screening the treatment and also to summarize the whole thing now coming to the disease burden itself uh, the, we have a very very large population who are affected uh, by the condition and it is more than all the other infective conditions put together which we were so worried about in the last few decades so going forward i think diabetes will be our biggest fear now uh, this is the uh, map here that shows us the prevalence currently and the expected millions in cases in by 2045 and if we look at southeast asia per se we can uh, expect an increase of close to 20% uh, and a huge number are expected to be affected by the disease and its complication so like i was mentioning before we don't have very good studies and now that dr praveen has done a study i'm sure these numbers will be very important going on to the prevalence of uh, dr in india it's anywhere between uh, 20 to 28% uh, based on some some of the studies that we have and we have uh, a close to 75 million indians living with the disease and the age of onset gets younger and younger currently it's at you know 42.5 we have even seen patients in the second and third decade of their life coming in with uh, diabetes nearly 1 million uh, indians die due to diabetes every year and india is projected to be home to 109 million by 2035 the high incidence in our population is due to the genetic susceptibility the high calorie diet the low activity lifestyle that we have and uh, when we look at diabetic retinopathy per se it's one of the complications of diabetes we also have other complications like uh, nephropathy neuropathy and uh, retinopathy sometimes is actually the first indication that the patient even has diabetes when we took look at the retina and we tell the patient you know that uh, you are you a diabetic their first uh, defense mechanism is like no like how do you don't have a, how do you know you don't have diabetes it's simply because uh, i don't have doctor i haven't checked my blood sugars so i don't have so not knowing doesn't mean you don't have the disease i think that's something that we need to impress upon our patients uh, that uh, they need to first get themselves checked uh look for the elevated blood uh, glucose and also look for other risk factors and high bp as well now other than that uh, once we know that it's a complication why does it occur it is basically microvascular complications affecting the small blood vessels and it's also the reason why all the other uh, you know organs are also affected uh, giving rise to an increased incidence of uh, cerebrovascular and cardiovascular disease as well now why does uh, loss of vision occur it is uh, one of the most feared complications actually when you look at and ask these patients uh, many of them feel that even though they know that uh, uh, there can be multi organ uh, involvement most of them are concerned about actually losing their vision they, that was their biggest biggest concern 
So if you see 50% of them thought that uh, loss of sight or uh, retinopathy itself is worrisome, 21% were worried about uh, cardiac issues, 11 about renal and the rest. So uh, now that we know that it is a big fear for patients and for us and the community at large, uh, and the very fact that we're dealing with huge numbers, I think the disease burden is only going to increase. And we already now know that diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of blindness in the working the, you know, age group. So we know that productivity is definitely going to get affected. And like I mentioned, two important causes are uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy and macular edema, which can cause vision threatening, uh, you know, um, debilitation for our patients. So this is uh, just showing an uh, age standardized uh, prevalence where you have any DR and vision threatening uh, DR is there in over 10% of the patients. And when you extrapolate these pre uh, pre to the, these prevalence rates to the world diabetes po population, you will see that there are at least 17.2 million patients with PDR and over one fourth of them have vision threatening diabetic retinopathy. So what are the risk factors? Uh, there are some modifiable and non-modifiable. Important modifiable risk factors are systemic control, HPA1C, hypertension, weight, dyslipidemia, whereas the non-modifying and unfortunately for those who develop diabetes as young patients is the diabetes duration. Very important is that they come to you and say, doctor, my diabetes is absolutely under control. My HPA1C is 6, 5.5. But the point is that the patient would have been a diabetic for 30, 40 years. So that itself is a non-modifiable risk factor. And uh, they have a higher influence on the prevalence of DME as well, both HbA1c and diabetes duration. So we know that diabetic retinopathy is the herald of other complications as well. Uh, once we see it, we also need to screen the patients for other uh, conditions like uh, nephropathy, neuropathy, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular. And therefore, personalized treatment for them based on what are the risk factors, uh, like the ones that I just uh, mentioned now. So this is an important thing. The presence of retinopathy more than doubled the risk of cardiovascular disease in type 2 diabetic patients and made it four times more in patients with type 1 diabetes. So we really need to look at the larger picture. Make sure that your patient uh, goes for a full uh, workup and uh, management. So pathophysiology is basically, we see a lot of uh, uh, microvasculopathy leading to hemorrhages, exudates. Uh, there are a lot of blood vessel abnormalities that we see. We see new blood vessels being formed, which eventually start leaking. They bleed. They give rise to neovascularization, which becomes the hallmark of advanced disease. And uh, because there's blood vessel breakdown, uh, also there is uh, fluid collection or edema, which causes blurring of vision. So these are the clinical features. We have mild. We have uh, moderate uh, NPDR and then we have, uh, you know, these are the different stages where we still don't see new blood vessels forming. So here the uh, treatment remains uh, very different. We either, uh, you know, uh, treat them with lasers or with injections. But once we go into the proliferative stage, lasers definitely play a role. But then eventually these patients would need advanced treatment in the form of surgery. These are some of the images of advanced uh, diseases, proliferative diabetic retinopathy primarily. So I've already mentioned these uh, findings, but what we need to understand is that 50% of patients with very severe NPDR do progress to PDR within one year, which is why we need to keep a very, very close uh, follow-up on these patients. And 25% uh, of patients have PDR at 15 years of diabetes duration. So again, need to follow up these patients annually to ensure that we can treat them on time. Diagnosis uh, depends primarily on clinical uh, you know, examination, but also we have a lot of imaging at our disposable, uh, disposal, whether it is wide field angiography, uh, whether it is OCT, and it's a very, very good user tool to show response to treatment in our patients. We also have non-invasive imaging such as Okta, which shows us uh, you know, these new blood vessels without the use of a dye. And these are wide field imaging of the same patient that I show in the beginning where you can see the extent of the disease. You're seeing, uh, you know, ischemia, you're seeing sclerosed vessels here. And then you have ultrasonography when you don't have view because of, uh, you know, hemorrhage in these patients. All these uh, imaging are important because we need to prognosticate. We need to explain to the patient the severity of the disease. Now coming to screening, screening and referral, who to, where, how and when. Uh, it can be a clinician or a technician, it can be on-site or remote, it can be clinical or imaging based. 
but something must be done it can be at your clinic if you're a non uh, ophthalmologist uh, there are many non mediatic cameras uh, made in india where you can use to screen patients and then refer them the minute we see any sort of uh, uh, you know abnormality these are some of the devices that are available and when to screen them the periodicity of screening is also available easily online screening criteria depends on how poor the vision is if the vision is good then uh, the referral may not be mandatory but then if the vision is poor referral to an ophthalmologist becomes very very important quickly over the treatment we have intravitreal drugs where i mentioned about edema also focal modified grid laser is becoming less useful now because the intravitreal drugs are doing very well also panretinal photoperchylation and eventually surgery if it's very advanced so this is uh, how i mentioned the different treatments that are required follow up is very very important even after treatment because the patient's sugars can go haywire and the disease again becomes worse so depending on the severity of the disease especially center or not uh, involved is when we follow up these patients systemic control important like i said it also reduces the retinopathy risk and uh, we know that the effect persists for a very long time for type 2 glycemic control reduces the risk of progression by at least 33% so to conclude dr is a complication of diabetes caused by damage to the small blood vessels patients with severe npdr pdr or dme require immediate referral to an ophthalmologist annual eye screening for diabetes patients is highly recommended treatment of dr and dme requires a multifactorial multidisciplinary approach especially with somebody like dr rajiv because it's impossible to manage these patients on your own because their systemic issues are so many and we need to handle it as a team clear communication between the diabetologist and retinologist is essential for optimal patient care we have 126 million people worldwide affected by diabetic retinopathy and 37 million as of 2012 had vision threatening dr so i think it's time for us to act and india itself an average 20 percentage of patients with type 2 diabetes have some form of disease and 78 percentage will have diabetes after 15 years of uh, the disease as i mentioned diabetic retinopathy would present a comprehensive eye examination can lead to an early diagnosis treatment and prevent vision loss in these patients thank you so much